We are back with part two of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLV. And this week we are, we have just started Ezekiel. We did the introduction and we're doing chapters one through 16 this week. And we are now beginning chapter four. Ezekiel portrays the siege of Jerusalem. Now you, son of man, take a brick and lay it before you, engrave on it a city, Jerusalem, lay siege against it, build earthworks against it, raise an assault ramp against it, pitch camps against it, and place battering rams all around it. Take an iron plate and set it up as an iron wall between you and the city. Set your face toward it so that it is under siege, so you will lay siege against it. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. Then you are to lie on your left side and set it, set on it the punishment of the house of Israel according to the number of days that you lie on it. You will wear their iniquity. I have appointed the years of their punishment to you as a number of days, 390 days. So you will bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. When you have completed these, you will lie on your right side and bear the iniquity of the house of Judah, 40 days, a day for each year. I will. I have appointed to you. You will set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem with your arm bared and, and prophesy against it. Behold, I will put ropes upon you. You will not be able to turn from side to side until you have completed the days of your siege. Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and rye, and put them in one bowl. You will not you you will make bread from them for the for the number of days that you will lie on your side for 390 days you will eat it. The food that you will eat will be 20 shekels a day by weight. You will, you may eat from it from time to time. You are able to drink water by measure a sixth of a hen. And that's about three cups. And the other measurement um, for um, the food, the shekels by weight, would be about eight ounces of food. You may, you may drink it from time to time. Eat it as barley cakes. Bake it on human dung before their eyes. Then Adonai said, This is how Benaiah Israel will eat their bread unclean among the nations where I will scatter them. Then I said, uh, Adonai Elohim, behold, I have never defiled myself from my youth up until now. Have I not eaten what died of itself? Or was torn by beasts? Tainted meat has never come into my mouth. He said to me, see, I have given you cow dung instead of human dung, so you will prepare your bread on it. Then he said to me, son of man, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. They will eat bread by weight in anxiety, and they will drink water by measures in horror. On account of their lack of bread and water, they will be appalled at one another and waste away in their iniquity. And that's the end of chapter 4. Sign of a shaved head. Now you, son of man, take a sharp sword. Use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Take their balances to weigh and divide the hair. A third you will burn in fire in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are complete. Take a third and strike it with a sword all around the city. Scatter a third to the wind and I will draw out a sword after them. Take a few from there and tie from them in your garment. Again, take some of them throw them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the house. A fire will spread from it into all the, into all the house of Israel. Thus says Adonai Elohim, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations with countries all around her. She has rebelled against my ordinances by doing wickedness worse than the nations and against my decree worse than the surrounding countries for they have rejected my ordinances. And as for my decrees, they have not walked in them. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, because you are more turbulent than the surrounding nations in that you have not walked in my decree or following my ordinances, nor have you observed the ordinance, the ordinances of the surrounding nations. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, behold, I in turn am against you. I will execute judgments among you in the sight of the nations. On account of your abominations, I will do with you that which I have never done and the like of which I would never do again. Therefore, the fathers will eat some of, will eat the sons in your midst, and the sons will eat their fathers. I will execute judgments 
on you and I will scatter the remainder of you to all the winds. Therefore, as I live, says Adonai Elohim, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations, therefore I will shave you off. My eye will not spare and I will not, I will have no pity. A third of you will die with the plague and will be consumed with the famine in your midst. A third will fall by the sword all around you. A third I will scatter to all the winds and draw out a sword after them. I will vent all my anger and satisfy my fury on them. Then I will rest. So they will know that I, Adonai, have spoken in my zeal when I satisfied my fury on them. Moreover, I will make you a ruin and a mockery among the surrounding nations and in the sight of all who pass by. When I execute judgment upon you in anger, rage, and furious chastisement, you will be a mockery and a taunt, a warning and a horror to the surrounding nations. I, Adonai, have spoken it when I send evil arrows of famine upon them. For destruction, I will send them to destroy you, and I will intensify the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. I will send on you famine and evil beasts, and they will make you childless. Plague and blood will sweep through you. I will bring the sword upon you. I, Adonai, have spoken. And that's the end of chapter 5. Woe to the mountains is chapter 6. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy to them. Say, say mountains of Israel, hear the word of Adonai. Thus says Adonai Elohim concerning the mountains and concerning the hills, concerning the wadis and concerning the valleys. Behold, I will bring a sword on you. I will destroy your high places. Your altars will become desolate. Your sun pillars will be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols. I will lay the corpses of Benai Israel before their idols. I will scatter your bones around your altars. In, your, in all your dwellings, the cities will be desolate. The high places will be deserted. Your altars will be laid waste and made desolate. Your idols broken and destroyed. Your sun pillars cut down and your works blotted out. The slain will fall in, in your midst. Then you will know that I am Adonai. Yet I will leave a remnant, some that escape the sword among the nations. When you have been scattered throughout the countries, the survivors will, will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive how I was crushed by their adulterous heart that has strayed from me and their eyes which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves in their own sight for the evils that they committed in all their abominations. They will know that I am Adonai. I have not warned in vain that I would do this evil to them. Thus says Adonai Elohim, clap your hands, stamp your foot and cry. Alas, because of all the vile abominations of the house of Israel, who will fall by the sword, by famine, and by plague. The one who is far off will die of the plague. The one who is near will fall off by the sword. Whoever remains and is spared will die by the famine. This is how I will spend my fury on them. You will know that I am Adonai when your slain lie among their idols surrounding their altars. On every high hill, on all the mountaintops, under every green tree, and under every leafy oak, the places where they offer sweet aroma to all their idols. I will stretch out my hand over them and make the land desolate and waste more than the wilderness of Dibla, wherever they live, they live. They, then they will know that I am Adonai. And that's the end of chapter six. Chapter seven, a singular evil comes. The word of Adonai came to me saying, you, son of man, thus says Adonai Elohim concerning the land of Israel. An end. The end has come on the four corners of the land. The end is upon you. I will send my anger on you. I will judge you according to your ways. I will bring all your abominations on you. My eyes will not spare you, nor will I have pity. But I will bring your ways upon you for your abominations in your midst. Then you will know that I am Adonai. Thus says Adonai Elohim, an evil, a singular evil, behold, it comes. An end has come, the end has come. It has awakened against you. Look, it is coming. Doom has come upon you, inhabitant of the land. The time has come, the day is near, panic, not joyful shouting on the hills. Now soon I am about to pour out my fury on you. 
I will exalt my anger on you. I will judge you according to your ways. I will bring all your abominations on you. My I will not spare you, nor will I have pity. I will repay you for your ways. Your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that it is I, Adonai, who strikes. Behold the day. Look, it is coming. Doom has gone out. The rod has budded. Arrogance has blossomed. Violence grows into a rod of wickedness. Nothing will come from them. Nothing from their crowd. Nothing from their tumult. Nothing distinctive among them. The time has come. The day draws near. The buyer will not rejoice. The seller will not play the mourner. For wrath is on the entire crowd. For a seller will not regain what he sold as long as they are alive. For the vision against her whole crowd will not be revoked. No one will preserve his life because of his iniquity. They have blown the horn. They have made everyone ready, yet no one goes to the battle. Surely my wrath is on her whole crowd. Outside is the sword, inside plague and famine. Whoever is in the field will die by the sword. Whoever is in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. Those survivors will, who escape will head for the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them moaning each one over his iniquity. All hands will be feeble. All knees will turn to water. They will also gird on sackcloth. And sackcloth is a very coarse, rough, rough uh, fabric woven from flax or hemp or black goat's hair. Horror will cover them. Shame will be upon their all faces. Boldness will be all, upon all their heads. They will throw their silver in the streets. Their gold will be as garbage. Their silver and their gold cannot deliver them in the day of Adonai's wrath. They will not satisfy their appetite or fill their bellies, for their iniquity is a stumbling block. They took pride in their beautiful jewelry and made images of their abominations and their detestable idols. Therefore, I made it nita to them. I will give it into the hands of the strangers as plunders and to the wicked of the earth as spoil, and they will profane it. I will turn my face from them as they will profane the place I treasure. Robbers will enter it and profane it. Forge the chain, for the land is full of bloodshed. This city is full of violence. I will bring the wicked of the nations. They will possess their houses. So I will end the pride of the strong when their holy places are profaned. Shuddering comes. They will seek peace, but there will be none. Disaster upon disaster will come and rumor upon rumor. They will seek a vision from a prophet, but Torah will perish from the Kohen and counsel from the elders. The, kings, the king will mourn. The prince will be clothed with despair. The hands of the people of the land will tremble. By their conduct, I will deal with them. By their own standards, I will judge them. Then they will know that I am Adonai. And that's the end of chapter 7. Chapter 8, Abomination in the Temple. This is where Ezekiel is actually being shown the abomination. In the sixth year, on the fifth day of the sixth month, I was sitting in my house. The elders of Judah were sitting before me. There the hand of Adonai fell on me. I looked, and behold, a form of resembling fire. From the appearance of his waist downward, fire, and from his loins and waist upward, something like the appearance of brightness as glowing metal, something like the form of a hand stretched out and took me by the hair of my head. The Ruach lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. He brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the gate of the inner court facing north, where the idol that provokes furious jealousy was. Behold, the glory of God of Israel. The glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the valley. He said to me, Son of man, lift your eyes towards the north. So I lifted up my eyes towards the north. Behold, north of the gate of the altar was this image provoking jealousy in the entrance. He said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel is committing here. That drives me far off from my own sanctuary. But you see, but you will see even greater abominations. He brought me to the door of the court. When I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, now dig through the wall 
When I had dug through the wall, there was a door. He said to me, go and see the wicked abominations that they do there. So I went in and saw, behold, every detestable image of creeping things and beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel engraved on the surrounding walls. Standing there before them were 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel. Jazaniah, son of Shaphan, standing in their midst, each man with his censer in his hand, a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in his chamber of his carved idol? For they said, Adonai does not see us. Adonai has forsaken the land. He said further to me, you will see still greater abominations that they are doing. He brought me to the door of the gate of Adonai's house, which was towards the north. Behold, the woman sat there weeping for Tammuz. He said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? You will again see even greater abominations than these. So he brought me into the inner court of Adonai's house. Behold, at the door of the temple of Adonai, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of Adonai and their face towards the east. And they were bowing in worship eastward towards the sun. He said to me, have you seen this, son of man? Is it too light a thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations they practice here? And they must also fill the land with violence and provoke me still more? Look, they are putting the twig to my nose. Therefore, I will indeed act in fury. My eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity. Though they cry into my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. I want to mention here... um, Ezekiel was being shown all the abominations, um, and this was actually at the temple. This was actually, you know, the house of God where this was being done, you know, by the king, by the by the priests. And then he goes to the front where um, this woman is weeping for Tammuz, um, and Tammuz is a false god, um, a demigod who... Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Some some religions that even claim to be um, Christian worship Tammuz. Um, Tammuz is, was a demigod um, who um, began as a, a Sumerian shepherd. Uh, Tammuz died. Um, and once a year, it's, it's a copycat religion, and this is not Yeshua. Um, they worship. Um, and... It's a whole, so just just a little bit more on Tammuz. Um, um, this was idolatrous practice to weep for Tammuz. And God made that clear that this was detestable. Um, this, When I said Sumerian shepherd, it's spelled S-U-M-E-R-I-A-N. Um, and supposedly he died and then um, there was weeping. Um, for like 40 days for, for Tammuz and he was resurrected and all this. Um, and actually Tammuz is, um, relates to Osiris, uh, yeah, Osiris. And I believe Semiramis, it's, 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 I'm not even going to go there. (laughs) It's the mythology and the false gods, um, that were actually being, um, worshipped. And and this is what God was actually bringing out to Ezekiel, that, look, they're even worshipping false gods and, and, and weeping for them. Um, this is, this is my people that have really gone south. Um, so, and he was showing them every abomination that he could um, to make it clear to Ezekiel and so that he could see uh, what they were doing and he could actually address them um, clearly. And chapter nine is wrath upon Jerusalem. Then he called into my ears in a loud voice saying, bring near the executioners of the city, each with his weapon of destruction in his hand. Behold, six men came from the direction of the upper gate facing north, each with his war club in his hand. One man among them clothed in linen had a scribe's writing case at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Then the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherub, 
where it had been to the threshold of the house. He called to the man clothed in linen who had the scribe's ink horn at his side. Adonai said to him, Go throughout the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem. Make a mark on the foreheads of the people who sigh and moan over all the abominations that are committed in it. To the others, he said in my hearing, Go through the city after him and strike. Show no pity or compassion. Kill off old men, young men, and girls, little little children and women, but touch no one who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. Then they began with the elders who were before the house. He said to them, to buy the house and fill the courts with the slain, go out. So they went out and began to kill in the city. While they were out killing and I was left alone, I fell on my face and cried out, saying, Alas, Adonai Elohim, are you going to destroy all the remnant of Israel by pouring out your wrath upon Jerusalem? He said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is very, very great. The land is full of blood and the city is full of corruption. For they say, Adonai has forsaken the land. Adonai does not see. As for me, my eye will not show pity, nor will I spare. I will bring their conduct upon their head. Behold, the man clothed in linen, who had the inkhorn at his side, reported, saying, I have done just as you have commanded me. So this is kind of a type and shadow of Revelation when you think about it. And actually, it does take us to Revelation um, in the footnote. Um, and I'm going to go there. In Revelation 9, verse 4, says, They were told to do no harm to the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So that is like a type of shadow. And we are already at uh, 22 minutes. So I am going to pause this now and come back uh, with the next part. And we're going to begin chapter 10.